Have you ever looked up at the moon and felt a sense of familiarity? It's our constant companion, the silent keeper of our planet's nights. We think we know it. But what if I told you that this familiar silver sphere is holding a secret, a deep, magnetic secret that challenges everything we thought we knew about its violent birth and its turbulent past? The story isn't written in craters or canyons, but in something invisible, etched into the very rocks brought back by the Apollo astronauts. A magnetic ghost. This ghost hints at a time when the moon was not the quiet, dead world we see today. It hints at a cataclysmic past and a power it no longer possesses. The question is, what created it? And could the answer finally solve the mystery of where the moon truly came from? The year is 1969. Humanity takes its first steps onto another world. The Apollo astronauts weren't just there to plant a flag. They were cosmic detectives sent to gather clues from the oldest crime scene in our celestial neighborhood. They brought back 382 kilograms of lunar rocks and soil, pieces of the moon itself. Back on Earth in pristine laboratories, scientists began to analyze these priceless samples. And almost immediately they found something that shouldn't have been there. Something impossible. Many of these rocks were magnetized. Now that might not sound strange at first. You have magnets on your fridge. But here's the problem. For a rock to become permanently magnetized, it has to cool down from a molten state in the presence of a strong magnetic field. Our Earth has one. It's generated by the churning molten iron core deep within our planet. This is our global magnetic shield, the dynamo that protects us from solar radiation. Except at the moon, today it has no global magnetic field. It's a geologically quiet or dead world. Its core is thought to be small and mostly solid. So a huge glaring question mark appeared in labs around the world. Where did the magnetism in these rocks come from? It was a ghost in the machine, evidence of a powerful magnetic field that had long since vanished, leaving behind only these faint rocky whispers. For decades, the leading theory was elegant, if a little surprising. It was the idea of a lunar dynamo. Scientists proposed that billions of years ago, Shortly after its formation, the moon wasn't dead at all. It was alive. Its core was a churning, chaotic sphere of molten metal just like Earth's. This churning motion, driven by the moon's rotation and heat from its formation, could have generated a powerful magnetic field, perhaps even as strong as Earth's at one point. As lava flowed onto the lunar surface and cooled, the iron-rich minerals inside would have aligned themselves with this field, locking in a magnetic signature like a tape recorder capturing a song. Then, as the small moon cooled down much faster than the Earth, the dynamo would have sputtered and died. The beating heart of the moon would have stopped, and the magnetic field would have vanished into space. All that's left is the recording, frozen in those ancient rocks. It's a neat story. It makes a lot of sense, but science is a tough critic, and the lunar dynamo theory has problems big ones. First, the moon is small. It's hard for planetary scientists to create models where a core that's small could generate a field so strong for so long. The energy just doesn't seem to be there. Second, the magnetism found in the lunar rocks is strange. It's incredibly varied. Some rocks are strongly magnetized, others barely at all, and their magnetic north points in all sorts of random directions. If a single global dynamo was responsible, you'd expect more consistency. It felt like investigators arriving at a scene with clues that didn't just point to one suspect, but to a dozen, all at once. The neat story of a lunar dynamo was starting to unravel. This is where the story takes a turn, from a quiet death to a series of violent, spectacular events. What if the magnetism wasn't generated from within the moon, but was delivered from the sky? This is the second major theory impact generated magnetism. Imagine the early solar system. It wasn't the orderly place we see today. It was a cosmic shooting gallery filled with debris. The young moon was being bombarded by colossal asteroids and comets, some hundreds of kilometers across. When an object that massive strikes the moon at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, the energy released is almost unimaginable. The impact doesn't just create a crater, it vaporizes rock, creating an expanding cloud of superheated plasma, a gas of charged particles. 
Now here's the genius of this theory. As this plasma cloud expands at supersonic speeds across the lunar surface, the movement of all those charged particles would, for a brief moment, generate an incredibly powerful magnetic field. It would be like a localized temporary dynamo, but one of immense strength centered right at the impact site. Any rocks melted by the impact that were cooling down inside this fleeting magnetic bubble would become strongly magnetized. This theory explains a lot of the weirdness. It explains why the magnetism is so patchy and localized. A rock near a giant impact basin, like the Imbrium Basin, might be strongly magnetic, while one a thousand kilometers away would have no magnetism at all. It also explains why the magnetic fields point in random directions. Each impact would have created its own field with its own orientation. Suddenly, the scattered clues started to make a different kind of sense. It wasn't the work of one consistent source, but the chaotic aftermath of multiple unrelated violent events. The moon wasn't a world with a dying heart, it was a world that was repeatedly struck by lightning. So how do we choose between these two incredible stories? A long dead dynamo or a history of cosmic bombardment? The detectives, our scientists, needed more evidence. They went back to the rocks, looking closer than ever before, and they found a crucial clue hidden in tiny beads of volcanic glass. These glassy beads were formed during fiery volcanic eruptions on the ancient moon, they were shot up into the sky and cooled almost instantly, freezing a snapshot of the magnetic environment at that exact moment. And crucially, these beads were found far away from any major impact craters. In 2017, a team analyzing these tiny glass recorders found something amazing. They showed that a significant magnetic field existed on the moon about 3.7 billion years ago, a time when volcanism was active, but major, basin-forming impacts were thought to be less frequent. Furthermore, the strength of this field seemed to decline over hundreds of millions of years, which is exactly what you would expect from a slowly dying internal dynamo, not from random, instantaneous impacts. This discovery tipped the scales back in favor of the dynamo. It was a powerful piece of evidence suggesting the moon did, indeed, have a beating heart for a time. So is that it? Case closed? Not quite. Science is rarely that simple. The impact theory is still too good at explaining the chaotic, powerful magnetism we see around giant craters. So a new idea is emerging, a hybrid theory. What if both are true? Perhaps the early moon had a weak, sputtering dynamo. It was there, but it wasn't very impressive. Then, when a giant asteroid hit, the superheated plasma from the impact didn't just create its own magnetic field, it amplified the weak background field of the dynamo concentrating it and making it incredibly powerful in that one location. This best-of-both-worlds idea explains both the long-lived weaker fields found in the volcanic glass and the incredibly strong chaotic fields found near impact basins. It paints a picture of a moon that was complex, a world with a weak internal engine that was periodically supercharged by external violence. This brings us back to the biggest question of all, the one that started this whole investigation, where did the moon come from? The leading theory is the giant impact hypothesis. It says that a Mars-sized planet, which we call Theia, slammed into the young Earth over 4.5 billion years ago. The cataclysmic collision threw a vast cloud of molten rock and debris into orbit, which eventually coalesced to form our Moon. Understanding the Moon's magnetic past is critical to testing this hypothesis. If the Moon formed from this hot, chaotic debris, it would have had a molten, churning core from the very beginning, the perfect ingredient for a dynamo. Figuring out how strong that dynamo was and how long it lasted gives us a direct window into the conditions of the moon's birth. If the dynamo was strong and long-lasting, it supports the idea of a moon born hot and fully molten from a giant impact. If it was weak or non-existent, and all the magnetism came from later impacts, then we might have to rethink the details of its formation. The magnetic ghost isn't just a fun little mystery. It's a fundamental clue to our own planet's history. The story of the Moon's magnetic field is the story of its birth, and by extension a crucial chapter in the story of Earth. We still don't have the final answer. The debate between the dynamo, impacts, or a hybrid model continues to fuel research and new missions, but what we've found so far has transformed our view of the Moon. It's not just a dead grey rock. 
It's a dynamic world with a history of fire and violence. It's a body that once had a beating heart, a magnetic shield that has long since faded, leaving only a cryptic message behind. A message that we are finally beginning to read. The next time you look up at that silver sphere, remember the ghost within, the faint magnetic echo of a world that once was. What do you think is the real story behind the moon's magnetism? Was it a dying heart, a history of violent impacts, or a combination of both? Let me know your theory in the comments below. If you found this cosmic detective story as fascinating as I do, please hit that like button. And for more deep dives into the universe's greatest mysteries, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.